I'm Aki Martinson, and I am an addict. A hardware addict. Let's get this stuff off of the floor, shall we? I store my hardware in organizer boxes like these. Since moving into my current headquarters, I haven't had them all together in one place up on the wall. Let's change that. I have two types, these steel cases with removable plastic organizers and plastic cases with a mix of small and large drawers. My plan was to mount all the organizers on one sheet of plywood. In fact, here it is. But just hours after buying this sheet, I saw a video that changed everything. Engineer and YouTuber Max Maker has the same plastic organizers I have, but he installed them on a mobile platform made out of 8020 aluminum extrusion. And he included an LED strip, backlighting the clear plastic bins and making them glow from within. Of course, I had to throw the old plan out. Go follow Max, by the way, he's fantastic. Link in the description. Here's the plan. A flat frame of inch square aluminum extrusion bolted together and screwed to the wall. The 12 plastic organizers will be installed on the horizontal rails in two rows, and I can use the framework to support LED light strip all around the perimeter. So let's start cutting. How do you screw 8020 extrusion to the wall? Here is one way. This is a quarter inch transfer punch. It's the largest one I have that still fits in the slot. So this is a reasonable way to mark the center. Then we can drill with a bit like this. The twist drill will go all the way through and the countersink will drill through the upper web and partially into the middle web so that the screw head is countersunk. For these number 10 screws, I needed to slightly enlarge the hole with another bit, which is what I'm doing here. I've 3D printed some decorative end caps for the exposed ends of the extrusion. One of them is larger because it will house the power inlet for the lighting system. These accept quarter 20 screws, which is overkill, sure, but it's convenient to tap the central hole of the extrusion for that size with no drilling required. I have to make a little slot in the back of one of the extrusions for wiring purposes. But Aki, I hear you saying, you built a stand for your portable bandsaw. Why aren't you using it? Look at this. The tire is melting. I don't know why. I've got a new one on order. But for now, back to the hacksaw. Now for assembly. I'm putting the whole thing together with these cheap generic inside corner connectors that use set screws. The official ones from 8020 are nicer, but much more expensive, more than $6 each. And for this application, I don't need the corners to be very strong as the two load bearing rails, the top and middle one, will be screwed to the wall at six places each. But what about those steel cases? They have opaque backs, so they can't be backlit. I'll mount those in a separate row above the plastic organizers, and for that, I'll use a single French cleat rail. For that, I'm using 1x6 lumber from the big box store. For form's sake, I'll sand these and give them a quick coat of tongue oil.
There's a small flange in the sheet metal here. I'll mount the cleat just beneath that. Now this workshop is a spare bedroom and it has a built-in bookshelf. On top of that shelf, I have yet another kind of small parts organizer. In fact, I have eight of these. Now, I've designed this storage system to be as portable as possible for when I move into yet another space. But in the meantime, I might as well install the French cleat rail at such a height that this top surface is flush with the bookshelf surface and everything lines up nicely. This measurement tells me where the rail needs to be installed to achieve a specific height for the top surface of the case. Now, if this was a French cleat wall of the sort you've probably seen on YouTube already, instead of a single rail, there would be another cleat down here, preventing this from rotating back against the wall. Instead, we will use rubber bumpers, three quarter inch long, on these holes here. But Aki, I hear you saying, why bother with this cleat system when you could just screw these directly to the wall? Well, I have six of these. That would mean 12 holes. That's only six holes. And each one of those holes is a wood screw into studs. If I screwed this directly to the wall with two holes a piece, they would fall wherever they fall and they would have to be drywall anchors, which is not very strong compared to this. Back to the aluminum frame we made earlier. As I pointed out in a short video from last year, setting all your workbenches to the same height has its uses. Now for the really fun part, the lighting. I got this, 40 feet of LED strip from Amazon. It can be tuned from warm to cold, which is probably going to be nice. Let's try it out. There's a small gap just large enough for one wire between the L-shaped connector and the extrusion on each side, so we can fish two power leads through and connect them to a DC barrel jack. I'm sticking this thin controller onto the flange closest to the wall. Although I'm bridging the slot with this LED strip, it's sticking really well to the small bit of flange on each side and fits inside the grooves as though it was made for this. You could fish it into the slot if you wanted, but this is easier and works better at the corners. Now to jump the LED strip over the gap here. This cut line falls pretty neatly where I need it to, so that's where I'll cut the strip. Next I need to solder three wires for 24 volt power, cold white return, and warm white return. This can be a tricky thing to solder. I'm not going to lie, the first time I tried, I made a hash of it. The helpful tip is to pre-tin both the pads and the stripped wire ends if using stranded wire like this. That makes it a lot easier.
Once again, I used some jumper wires to cross the gap for the return trip. It's like the surface of the moon. I can't stop looking at it. I'm so happy I did the lighting. About this switch, I never use it. It controls an outlet somewhere in this room. Maybe the next inhabitants will want to use it, so I'm glad that I'm not moving it or anything like that. Just going to cover it up for now. That was another problem with the plywood plan. I would have had to either remove this switch or move it over or shift all of the storage closer to the bookshelf, which might have made it difficult to get at the books. So I'm happy it worked out this way instead. Thank you, Max Maker, for uh, showing me the light. It turns out I have two kinds of plastic organizers, ones with holes on the bottom and ones without. As luck would have it, I have exactly six of each. So here's the plan. The ones without holes will hang from the middle rail and the bottom rail will support the bottom edge. The ones with holes will hang from the top rail and the bottom edge here will get the rubber bumper treatment. These are the M5 screws and T-nuts I'm using for the bottom row. The top row takes M4 as it happens, and I wanted to use the largest screw possible for each. Preloading these screws to the right depth helps, because installing these things is fiddly to say the least. You have to have it just tight enough so it doesn't flop out of the track, and just loose enough so you can still slide it while getting the container situated. They're not all lined up exactly right. These organizers are a bit ragged. They were not that well made to begin with, and neither the years nor the miles have been kind to them since then. But they'll do the job. Now on to the top row. This is fantastic. It's given me so much more free space in the shop, and there's plenty of meat left on this bone. The whole thing is above the standard workbench height I've established for the shop, so I could still build another workbench and stick it under here. Excellent. But Aki, I hear you saying, this is almost at the ceiling. Isn't it too high? Not for me, baby. Also, 
As planned, the top of these organizers is the same height as the top of the built-in bookshelf, so I can do this. Now, as strong as this French cleat rail system is, these are very heavy, so I don't necessarily want to put a whole lot of extra weight on here, but it's nice to know I can if I have to. One more thing, this LED strip came with a remote control that can turn the lights on and off, change the intensity and color temperature, and that has a few preset modes. I've designed and 3D printed a holder for the remote that can be installed on the side of the rail here. It's like a beautiful city all lit up at night. And like a city, it's full of possibilities. See you in the morning. There's no hole in this one.